I am the hole in the flute through which the Christ's breath moves. Hafiz, the Sufi poet. Recently, I spoke to you about emptiness uh, from a Zen point of view. Now I want to speak about emptiness from a Christian point of view. In the talk that I gave on emptiness, I mentioned that most of us have grown up in a Christian atmosphere and our spirituality has been devotional. There's nothing wrong with that. And it can lead us to a very deep sense of relationship with God. However, there is a deeper spirituality. And Hafiz, in the beginning of his poem, The Hole in the Flute, captures what that deeper spirituality is. I am a hole in the flute through which the Christ's breath moves. Throughout the uh, New Testament, we read these passages that are probably quite frightening. From St. Matthew's Gospel, he who saves his life loses it. While he who loses his life for my sake discovers who he really is. He who saves his life loses it, while he who loses his life. I remember a time, and maybe you remember a time like this too, when hearing that passage when I was young was very scary. He who loses his life. That speaks to a loss of personal identity. And the only thing we can think about that is a kind of um, Xing out vacuity. Hmm. And of course, to our personal selves, that's exactly the way it appears. Because the personal self sets up a parameter that says, this is me, and that is not me. And so when I say I must lose this sense of me, I can only be scared. Throughout the Bible, Whenever God appears to the prophets, Moses, or in the New Testament, the first thing it says is, do not be afraid. Why would they say that? No one can see God and live. There's another image in the New Testament, which is quite striking. And Jesus uses it, and he says, Unless the grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains but a grain 
of wheat. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. If all we are going to be is a grain of wheat, we are headed for extinction, personal extinction. And yet we grasp so tenaciously onto that little grain of wheat that we are. not thinking of, in the dying, bearing much fruit. There are other passages in the New Testament that speak to this. St. Paul does a very good job. He says, I must decrease and he must increase. I, this personal I, This personal I is a prison. And the walls of that prison must become porous. To let Christ seep through. So that we are flooded and lose completely our identity. We become the hole in the flute that the breath of Christ moves through. St. Paul also says, I live, now not I, not I, but Christ lives in me. That translation doesn't really capture the dynamic of Christ lives in me. It really gives you the sense Christ lives me. This is the boundlessness. Boundlessness means no boundaries to this thing I call myself. Just like the sense of a hole in a flute. Empty. But the English word empty is so negative. It has such um, nihilistic connotations that we really don't find either in Zen or in Christianity. And finally, there's one other phrase that is very striking. And this is when Christ is on the cross and he's dying and he cries out, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me. The self dissolves. And when the self dissolves, our idea of God dissolves. And when our idea of God dissolves and all we have is the memory of God, we wonder, where has God gone? Nowhere. All of these, in quotes, negative images. He who saves his life loses it. He who loses his life discovers who he really is. Unless the grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies. Blessed are the poor in spirit. All of these negatives great against our own sense of identity. And yet they're telling us something so terribly important. It is difficult 
to let go of your own identity. But that is the way of liberation. I am the whole in the flute. And the breath of Christ moves through me. Just a whole. Now, if you feel scared or sad, uh, that's not a terrible, bad, awful thing. Maybe you need to mourn the sense of identity that you have. Maybe it's time to hold a funeral for this self you have cherished and clung to so desperately. There's nothing wrong with that. However, once we let go, we can say with St. Paul, I live, now not I, Christ. Not the idea of Christ, not the image of Christ. Not that, but Christ lives me. Love lives me. The breath moves through me and makes the music. And here's the real miracle. What does that look like? Because we can fantasize about what that would appear to be. It looks just like this. Now, if you're looking for anything special, that's still your little personal self. Wanting something that glitters in the spiritual world and not the real spirituality. It looks like this. Ah. Oh. Today I'm tired. <clears throat> this is our liberation. And if the Incarnation has anything to teach us, it teaches us that this life, right now, without any conditions, is complete and full as it is. I am the hole in the flute through which the breath of Christ moves. Listen to the music. It's not any different than the sound of those people talking upstairs. It's not any different to the thoughts running through your mind, wondering, where's the big payoff? Yeah, sometimes there's a big payoff. Most of the time, there isn't. It's just so simple. It's so utterly simple. And even the sense of resistance that you feel to this simplicity is it. Even that pushing it away 
that refusal to let go entirely and simply fall into it. Even that is it. We want it always, or we prefer it always to feel comfortable and cozy, but that's not the way life is. That's not the way it's going to be. That's the way the movies make it. You know, that's the way Disneyland makes it. So, to bring this to a gentle conclusion, I will quote again from Hafiz. I am the hole in the flute through which the breath of Christ moves. <laughs>